Hello, and welcome to Objective Health. I am your host, Doug. Uh, with me in our virtual studio are Elliot and Tiff. Hello. Hello. And uh, with us, as always, in the background is Damien on the ones and twos. Hello. And uh, today we are going to be talking about CBD. And we're going to be bringing on, we're interviewing um, Erica, our regular co-host on the show, and her husband, Dave, who have a uh, CBD farm in North Carolina. And, well, why don't we just bring him right on? <laughs> Rather than me <laughs> doing some kind of long, uh, long-winded uh, intro. Welcome, Dave and Erica. Thanks for having us. Yeah, we're here, live and direct right. from the farm. <laughs> So just like pretending that we have a really ignorant audience who have no idea what CBD is, maybe you can explain it. Well, I got my notes just in case, but I'll riff on this for sure. But um, CBD is actually short for cannabidiol. Um, I guess that's the genus species name. And it's a chemical compound found in the cannabis plant. Um, it was the first phytocannabinoid discovered in 1940. And um, the focus was on THC, the psychoactive component of cannabis, and not so much on all the other 111 or 113 cannabinoids in the plant. Mm. Um, so it's about 40% of the plant's extract and in 2018, they started doing clinical research on cannabidiol for um, anxiety, cognition, movement disorders, and pain. Um, basically, ca cannabinoids are chemical messengers uh, for the endocannabinoid system. And the endocannabinoid system is a system in our body that is just now starting to get Coverage, really. It's not really taught in medical schools. I think last I read, it's only taught in about 13% of medical programs across the U.S. And mm -hmm. so there's a lot of research coming out about how CBD helps people um, without the side effect of THC. So low amounts of THC, high amounts of CBD. Um, they basically interact with the body in two different ways. What are they called? Endogenous, meaning that it originates inside your body or also known as endocannabinoids and um, ex ex exogenous. Uh, exogenous. Which, uh, exogenous, thank you, which is originating outside of the body. So ca cannabinoids found in marijuana, such as THC and CBD, are considered the exogen exogenous. <laughs> so, <laughs> so um, I mean, there's a lot more research on the endocannabinoid system, and I, I have a few things here that it just helps. Um, they basically say that ca cannabinoids are like a lock and key system, and um, they have two basic activities. One is to modulate pleasure, energy, and well-being in the body, and the other is to slowly nudge the body back to health in the face of injury and disease. And so the literature is starting to say that this endocannabinoid system plays an important role in um, disease and uh, it, it interacts robustly with other non-cannabinoid systems in your body. So your endorphin system, your immune system, and the vanilloid system, which is responsible for transforming pain from acute to chronic. Hmm. Um, the endocannabinoid system regulates inflammation, pain, bone health, formation of new cells, fat and sugar processes, mood, energy, brain health, and hormones. Hmm. What is hemp? Is hemp the same as CBD? And can you get CBD and THC in the same plant? Like, well, first let's start. Well, what's the difference between CBD and THC and hemp? Well, uh, hemp would be, well, they, they really need to uh, have a new classification, right? Uh, 
there's three types of marijuana, basically. There is uh, uh, ruderalis. That would be uh, what people would think of as hemp as far as, you know, making fiber, uh, stuff like that out of it. Uh, then you have sativa and indica. Mm. Those are the different types. So hemp would be more of a ruderalis. And then THC is the more psychoactive part of it. And CBD, well, they're just learning about it. That's mm. what people are taking for the uh, medicinal benefits. So the ruderalis or the hemp basically has nothing to do with CBD or THC. It wouldn't even be the same plant. You would just use it like if you want to make hemp clothing oh, or no, hemp no, whatever. It does, have, it does have CBD. And generally that, that type, well, there's a lot of different uh, uh, strains of that. But um, uh, hemp would be... It's loaded with CBDs, but it's low in the THC, and mm -hmm. you need a little bit more THC for the medicinal qualities to come out, apparently. Mm. So hemp and plants what, would what be... Guy? Sorry. Oh, go ahead. No, I was just going to ask if, if, if hemp plants are the ones that you would use to harvest CBD as opposed to the other, other varieties you were talking about. Well, uh, you can, but it's, it has, it's mostly CBD, but it's not necessarily high in CBDs. Mm -hmm. So what, what breeders have done now uh, to make the, you know, the uh, CBD uh, oils and stuff is they've uh, bred the two together, like the Indica's, they say the Indica's got more medicinal properties, so they bred that with the uh, Ruderalis to get more high potent uh, CBD content. Mm. And are those then like low THC versions? Well, there's a kind of a whole gambit of it, right? There, well, that's one of the big problems we're facing now is uh, the uh, federal law and a lot of the state law is 0.3% uh, THC is the legal limit, right? So the way the uh, hemp plant works or cannabis is it varies as it grows. So at one point it might be 03 <laughs> When you harvest, it might be 0.7, and mm. then it becomes a illegal substance. Hmm. But it's still very small amounts of THC. So, so THC is like a psychoactive component that makes you feel high. What? Do, how does CBD make you feel? Does that have any kind of psychoactive properties? Well, uh, it's interesting because uh, when you smoke it, uh, if you've ever smoked THC before, you, you know the effects of that. So when you smoke it, you almost feel like you're going to get high, but you don't. But you have, like, generally what people report and uh, what I've found is you become relaxed. Uh, you, you're motivated. You know, you want to play the guitar or go, you know, go on a hike. So it, it is quite relaxing without the psychoactive effects. What about the paranoid effects? I have personally haven't experienced that and I don't know anybody who has yet. Hmm. Well, kind of as this whole field emerges um, in just really in the last year um, since the farm bill made the growing of hemp legal in the United States, with that 0.3% uh, THC quantity allowed, they're starting to do more research. Like I think there's um, over 6,000 articles on PubMed, like peer reviewed articles uh, looking into uh, CBD and the endocannabinoid system and how it works and what kind of um, relief it provides for people. But it just seems to be that there is a connection between those two things, like Dave was saying earlier, with uh, plants, you need a little bit of THC to have the entourage effect with the plants. So like a, a good example is like Big Pharma wants to isolate uh, cannabidiol and just make products out of that. But from the reading that I've been doing it, you have to have a little tiny bit of THC. It's negligible. You don't feel the effects from it, but the plant works synergistically. So mm -hmm. like um, if you were using other plant extracts, you know, you can't really isolate it to get the same effect. Mm. That makes sense. Yeah. The CBD 
like regular uh, marijuana, does it still have like the anti-carcinogenic effects that regular marijuana would have? Like would somebody, if they wanted to use CBD medicinally, somebody with cancer, would they pick CBD over regular marijuana? Well, uh, apparently, uh, like for certain types of cancer where they're using it as treatment, it's, it's more high doses of THC. Hmm. But think- CBD does have the the ability to be tumor suppressing. But as Dave said, you know, a lot of the, the cancer research, like just to give an example, Rick Simpson oil or what they call RSO, that is a really concentrated form of cannabis that has loads of THC. And it takes very high doses to attack tumors, um, which obviously has a very intense side effect. But one of the things that they're looking into for cancer treatment for people that don't want to have that intense high is actually suppositories. Mm-hmm. So taking um, the combination of CBD and THC rectally or vaginally. So that wouldn't have the psychoactive effects or not as much maybe? Correct. That's what they say. I, I, I haven't tried it, so I don't know. But um, <laughs> Well, that maybe. seems a little strange because they're both – internal like say if you were gonna do an edible or something um and people say that that gets them high why would a suppository either rectally or vaginally not get you high i don't understand that but um maybe because it uh, bypasses the digestive system I guess, but if you smoke it, it (laughs) bypasses the digestive system. (laughs) This is true. Hmm. Yeah, I guess further research is needed. (laughs) Yeah, I mean, it's it's there's so much information coming out. It seems almost daily, and I mean, if you just Google CBD, and I mean, it's an endless, endless rabbit hole of information. But um, maybe we want to share why we decided to do this farm project because. Uh, yeah, you know, why? <laughs> why? <laughs> you want to share why you decided to do this farm project? Well, I needed a job. <laughs> <laughs> we appreciate the honesty. <laughs> Well, I guess you'd call me a farmer by trade. And then uh, here, there's been a really big push for farming to uh, farm hemp or CBD. So I just started looking into it and it seemed like a pretty good uh, econo- economic opportunity. And also you're making something that's h- helping people. So that's what, that was a, uh, the startup. So medicine. And um, as he was saying, you know, we've been farming for 20 years and we've grown everything from bananas to avocados to lettuce to medicinal herbs like Tulsi. And um, when moving to North Carolina, we realized again that there was a, a, a need for a job for Dave for sure, but also this uh, farm bill passing the opportunity to set up greenhouses and grow cannabis for flower production. So what we mean when we say that is um, here in North Carolina, you can grow flowers to sell to dispensaries that sell CBD, high CBD, low THC flowers that people can smoke. So if people want to smoke CBD, they don't get high from it, but they still get all the taste and smell of of the cannabis, if that makes sense. So CBD smells just like the regular marijuana? Yes. Hmm. And it looks the same as well. Hmm. That, probably that could makes it bring up some police. legal issues. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's a can of worms. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I so guess it because kinda... it was... Oh, Sorry. go on, Doug. Well, I was just going to say that I guess because it's in this kind of hazy legal area right now where for you guys, anyway, I know some States have, have legalized marijuana completely, so they don't have this problem, but for you guys, it's kind of like this, this area where marijuana for recreational purposes is not legal. 
and CBD is legal. So it's kind of it's this really kind of gray area where, you know, the, the if somebody was smoking CBD, they could quite easily get busted. And trying to explain to the cop that you know no this is this is legal because I'm not getting high mm-hmm. from it. Like what? Well, yeah, what a can of worms. Hmm. Well, yeah. Well, at this point, they just need to legalize it across the, the board. Um, right. Yesterday, uh, yeah, yesterday, uh, us farmers took a blow. The USDA just released their regulations on CBD and hemp, and it's a farmer's nightmare uh, for all of us that's got into invested the time and money, and this is like multi million dollars have been invested. Now, what they've done is. Uh, they want to bring in the DEA to do all the testing, law enforcement. Uh, they put the level of THC at 0.3. So if it's 0.3 or above, say say you grow a plant and uh, it gets a little bit hot and you have that. Say you have, you know, a thousand pounds, you can be prosecuted as THC marijuana. You're kidding. It's just, it's just ridiculous. Like, from the 1940s, these guys, you know, it's so well, it seems have- like if they were going to do all that and make all those restrictions, why even make it legal in the first place? Are they going to send people out to individual farms and test every single plant that you grow to make sure it's below the legal limit? It well, that, seems like they're making more work for themselves. Yeah, it's that's what I mean. It's ridiculous. Like, uh, like to have testing now that it's got to be registered with the DEA. And they want some type of law enforcement to come out to test your crop uh, 14 days before harvest. And with all with the majority of the CBD strains that you get with the, the low THC, they just vary. You can't control the genetics. So, like I said, at one point it can be 0.3 and another one can be 0.7, which is still a very small amount of THC, but you can be prosecuted for marijuana laws. That's mm. ridiculous. So it's like something that you have absolutely no control over, even though your intentions are not to grow marijuana crops, but to grow CBD tr- crops, you could be busted because your plant yeah. happened to produce a little bit more THC, a little bit more, and still not enough to actually yeah. get you high. Yes, exactly. <sighs> can you, um, can yeah. you imagine being sent to prison for growing CBD? <laughs> Oh, it's, it's happening already. They, there was a farm down in South Carolina where a hundred year old farm had planted 20 acres of hemp. And just because the GPS location was off a little bit, probably a mistake, they came and arrested him and cut down half his crop. And now he's looking at criminal charges. Oh my God. And he was compliant. And there was another case too. I think it was in either South Dakota or North Dakota. They caught a, a driver with 300 pounds of CBD. It had passed the test originally, but when the cops tested it, uh, it was 0.5, which broke the, the limit on the law. And now he's looking at 15 years. Oh hmm. my God. That's you know, ridiculous. I mean, retarded. I don't even, yeah. I, you want to see Simi <laughs> Rand? <laughs> <laughs> Well, yeah, part of why we got into this whole project, back to what we were saying about the medicine, was in the beginning, we kind of knew it was really um, unclear. And so we did our due diligence and we filed for a legal permit uh, through the University of North Carolina Ag program. They have a hemp pilot program. And so they're encouraging, especially here in a rural area where we have lots of farmers, they're encouraging farmers to get involved with this and, you know, plant their acres and acres of hemp. And we decided that we would go the CBD flower route because we could use greenhouse technology. So we basically built greenhouses. Um, we got um, dirt and we did everything. We started all of our, our seeds and we, um, we, let the the state know what we were doing and you know you get your license and you put it up and everything and then as we kind of went through the season things just really started to change in the sense that all of a sudden about halfway through they said well we're gonna in North Carolina we're gonna ban the growing of CBD flowers 
<laughs> because they didn't smoking smoking CBD flowers. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So um, it really put us in a predicament because now we're pretty invested and we're already halfway through our season. And what do we cut everything down and just take our losses? And so we decided to just keep moving ahead because there wasn't anything technically on the books yet. You know, and and this is where we're at now, like what, six months later Hmm. is um, just trying to find out what the law is. And and they're really unsure about what the law is. Well, it's I don't know who makes policy, but basically they promote it. It's like the next best best thing for some of the old tobacco farms and how farmers could get uh, economically viable. So they're really promoting it. And then they just all of a sudden start restricting and then banning it. And, and like I said, there's been millions of dollars invested just here in North Carolina and everyone's just up in the air. Mm. And it's like, they know, they know like, uh, these CBD strains go hot. So they have this test at three weeks so you can pass and then they go hot and they turn a blind eye to it and then they outlaw it. It's just, none of it makes sense. So this is just for the CBD flower, not, I mean, I guess you have to grow flower to make the oil, but it seems like everywhere you look nowadays is like CBD is available here. Like you drive past a video store or something, everybody is selling CBD. So it's the flower that they're cracking down on because they don't want people to smoke it or is it just everything CBD? Well, no, it's it's it's, uh, it's because they can't distinguish the two between oh. that and THC. That's the main complaint, law enforcement, mm. right? So they're making it a law enfor- enforcement issue. Mm-hmm. But you guys could still um, use the flowers to make other CBD products, yeah? Oh, yeah. Yeah. We're in the process of having a whole product line from, you know, CBD oil to salves and uh, lotions. Mm. Uh, it's just amazing the demand and uh, also the testimonies, w- testimonials we're getting from folks. Mm. I mean, it's like every, every day someone's like, oh man, that's the best stuff. It, it, it saved my life. I can actually deal with pain or I can sleep at night. Mm. So, you know, I was a bit skeptical in the beginning, you know, like I wasn't sure how effective it was, you know, whether it's placebo I mean, it seems like a lot of science behind it, too, but it really is helping people. Mm. And most of the people who are getting it from you, are they using it for for pain or is there other things they're using it for as well? There's a whole gambit of stuff people are using it for. Uh, You know, some people can't sleep or they have anxiety. They either smoke it or take the drops and it it, uh, helps with that, you know. uh, For the the drops, would they they just like take them orally or do they hold them under the tongue or something? Yeah. Yeah. We've been using our uh, flowers and just infusing MCT oil, um, the fractionated coconut oil um, and just put it in a dropper and yeah, put it on your tongue um, to take internally. Uh, you can also extract it with grain <laughs> alcohol, what, one, 191 proof grain alcohol. So just let it simmer in there. It has a little alcoholic taste, but uh, we're really kind of still in the research and development phase. So what we've been doing is just giving people the product to try just to see, uh, get feedback. And um by far right now, the most popular item we've been making is our salve, which is just the flowers um, with coconut oil and uh, beeswax and cocoa butter and, um, you know, p- cooked down in a under 240 degree temperature. And you can, you know, cook it for anywhere from three to 12 hours just in a crock pot and um and then making the salve with it and having people use it um applied to the skin so we have a lot of elderly folks where we are and it seems to be about 85 percent of our clientele that has used Mm. it um, are older and dealing with things like arthritis aches and pains um you know recent surgeries knee surgery shoulder surgery and just actually topically applying it to the skin and uh, people are feeling relief. Um, Dave can share with you about his back issue. 
yeah, the first time I, I used it, I'm like, all right, let's check this stuff out and see what it does. And uh, I could barely stand up straight. I was in pretty severe pain and nothing in the past really works. But I, I rubbed the sap on and within 10 minutes, I mean, all the pain was completely gone. It was. Wow. Really so, I, I mean, I don't know, but it was, it, since then I've been using it and it definitely helps. And uh, like I said, the testimonials, I was down at the gym a couple of days ago and I'd given some to uh, one of the guys I know at the gym. He had uh, shattered his shoulder and he was in a cast for eight months and uh, his injury reappeared and uh uh, he said, Oh, I tried to salve and within a few minutes I could move my arm again. Wow. You know, I mean, I hear that just constantly. So it's interesting that you can do it kind of topically as well as, you know, taking it internally or <clears throat> excuse me, uh, like smoking it. Um, because, you know, I can think, I can think there would probably be a lot of people who weren't really interested in smoking it you know, mm -hmm. for whatever reason, like, you know, like you were mentioning the elderly and stuff like that, I can see that they maybe would not want to actually smoke it. But can you get all the same benefits from doing it topically? Like everything is absorbed and gets into the blood circulation and everything? Maybe Erica knows. I, I'm not sure of the science behind it, mm. you know. Yeah, I'm, I'm not 100% sure if mm. topically you get all of the phytocannabinoids in there. Um, I got to be honest. Uh, <laughs> it seems like if you really wanted to give it like a real one-two punch, if you didn't want to smoke it, you could use the salve and also use the drops. Yeah. Like, like if you're dealing with some kind of pain issue, you can put the salve directly onto the part that's hurting and then try the uh, drops for the anti-inflammatory effects maybe you would get. That maybe would be the... You could throw in a suppository as well just for good measure. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, that would be the direction out. I'd take. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, it's kind of like going back to that whole endocannabinoid system and how... It seems to, like I said earlier in the show, bring the body back into balance using that the plant medicine um, to, you know, modulate all these different things that seem to be out of balance. Um, you know, they in in the literature they call it kind of the ghost in the machine. That CBD is the ghost in the machine for the endocannabinoid system, and it 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 works with all of your other systems, like I suggested earlier the endorphins the hormones the cytokine so i don't really know the exact mechanism with which with which it works but it seems that topically at least for muscle pain like dave was talking about or injury that um you know something in the body recognizes it and it has that balancing effect maybe bringing the body back into homostasis mm -hmm. and then taking it internally as well I mean, I just find it interesting that the sleep issue is really um, a lot of people struggle with that. And, you know, a couple of weeks ago, we did a show on anxiety and all the alternatives that people are using for that. And it seems that the, the CBD is really helpful for, for, for those anxiety issues. Now, earlier, somebody mentioned about the paranoia with THC in some of the states that... Um, it's legal, like California, they do, um, they have clinics where they're doing ratios with, you know, like uh, one point, one part THC, two point CBD. So people are getting the entourage effect of the plant. Um, they're getting the benefits of relaxation and not the anxious, paranoid high that would come from, from the THC aspect. Mm -hmm. That makes mm -hmm. sense. Well, it's really interesting because just talking about, you know, anxiety and like brain kind of stuff, because I know that they've <clears throat> been doing like really promising studies on things like um, like Alzheimer's disease and psychosis, post-traumatic stress disorder. Um, they found that it actually helps uh, protect brain cells and regenerate brain cells, helps with seizures, epilepsy, autism. Like there's, I mean, it's, it's all preliminary research and stuff like that. So you can't necessarily, I mean, it, it's, it's not necessarily a cure, but 
just the fact that there are so many different things that it seems to be helping with, it just seems, you know, it just makes me mad that there's so many roadblocks up to just getting this amazing medicinal thing out there to the people who mm-hmm. actually need it. Yeah, well, it is, I, can, I can imagine that Big Pharma have had their say. <clears throat> uh, when you've got something so miraculous working on an endogenous system, um, it's almost like the perfect match or the perfect type of medicine for the human body. It works mm-hmm. for just such a wide variety of things. I mean, if you think of practically any health condition and you type in CBD or CBD and the health condition into Google, there's usually something on there. And that's not just like personal anecdotes. That's like actual clinical scientific literature, which has been studied, right? So there's, there's, um, there's, there's a major potential there, but I think that it could also, um, it could hurt the profits of, of some of the uh, longstanding pharmaceutical medications like pain relievers, right? You've got mm-hmm. like gabapentin and all these kind of things. It's like CBD really works and it doesn't have the horrible side effects and it also isn't terribly addictive like many of these pharmaceuticals are. Mm-hmm. Then um, I can imagine big pharma don't don't really like it. Yeah. Well, you get a true. sense, you know, you know, the conspiracy side of me is like, yeah, you know, like I don't know who's writing these policies, but it's not benefiting anybody who really needs it, yeah? Mm. Yeah. It's not even just the, the pharmaceuticals, too. I mean, I think there's a lot of um, other institutions that actually uh, benefit from having, uh, you know, marijuana illegal or, you know, even medicinal marijuana. Like, you know, there's a lot of people, there's a lot of forces, I think, that are actually trying to keep it, keep it down, including big pharma. But, I mean, you know, even the prison, uh, prison system... Um, you know, that's benefiting from having, you know, people like pot dealers in jail or, you know, CBD farmers in jail and mm-hmm. uh, the DEA. Like there's all these just a number of different different uh, forces that I think would be very happy to keep it exactly where it is. Well, next yeah. we'll be hearing about how CBD is a gateway drug to start smoking marijuana, yeah, and sure. then marijuana leads to other harder drugs. So I yeah. don't think that their stance on CBD is going to be as lenient as most people would hope. Because you think that, like, once they start legalizing CBD, then, you know, oh, okay, okay, well, they'll well, legalize regular marijuana soon. So this is just a step, but I don't know if it's going to be that easy. Yeah. Well, I, I will say selfishly, we hope that uh, the federal status, which right now, uh, you know, marijuana or cannabis is a, a schedule one drug, the same as heroin and cocaine. And then, you know, with the passage of the farm bill with, um, you know, allowing the states to grow hemp as long as it's got that less than 0.3%. Um, in leaving it up to the states to kind of establish their own framework on how they're going to regulate it and test it. I mean, if they just did away with the federal status of schedule one and they changed it to a schedule five, then it wouldn't be such an issue. But as you all are saying, like, you know, they're paranoid. It's going to be a gateway drug. I mean, but it's so confusing because you have states, I don't even know how many states now where it's legal recreationally, but then you have other states like North Carolina where, you know, you could get in trouble for growing CBD flour. So it's just, it's so confusing. And as farmers just trying to decide even what we're going to do next year, you know, do we do this project again next year? Is it a huge financial risk? I mean, if they, implement this no flower policy does that mean that they're going to show up at your farm and cut everything down and you know mm. haul you away it's, mm. it's unnerving to say the least well it, this is an example in illinois they, they ban smoking cbd flowers right and then a week later they uh <laughs> they made it legal to smoke thc what so that, really? that gives you an idea it doesn't even make sense <laughs> why on earth why would they do that i don't know because we're dealing with politicians a bunch of idiots oh for the most part <laughs> so right now in illinois you could get busted for smoking cbd whereas smoking pot wouldn't get you busted 
Well, you got to wait till 2020 in Illinois. It will go Uh legal in 2020. But one of the things that's interesting about Illinois is that, um, you know, they made it legal recreationally, and this was on Forbes website. Um, They're concerned that they're not going to have enough supply for the demand, and they're going to let over 780,000 marijuana convictions off. They're going to let, you know, almost a million people go on these convictions that they have for marijuana. So, but you can't smoke the CBD flower. (laughs) (laughs) Just tell the cops it's marijuana. Don't worry, it's not CBD. (laughs) So in in the CBD world, like if, you know, there's a certain now, especially with so many states legalizing it, there's a certain chicness to smoking pot now where it used to be like kind of like people would sneak and do it. Now it's become this whole cultural thing. So with CBD, do they have all like the different types of, like they do have with uh, marijuana, like all the different, Funny Northern names. And- oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, most definitely. Um, Damien, if you want to show a picture. So um, we we found a strain. Well, maybe you want to talk about it, what we grew this year, because we did grow some specific strains this year in, in our farm, on our farm. What picture? Uh, it's on Instagram. The in- ah. <laughs> Ooh, that's... That's uh, that's pretty. <laughs> there we go. It's the it's CBD butt, porn. <laughs> <laughs> so Dave will tell you a little bit about this flower. So these are the flowers that we grew on our farm. Well, that's what they call the abacus. It's it's actually nice. It's a kind of a purpley plant, uh, mm-hmm. but it's it's they. It's one of those strains where they bred the uh, hemp ruderalis into the indica, right? So it produces a really high uh, percentage of CBD. But as you can see, it looks just like the THC flowers. Hmm. So in, in the, the CBD flower smoking market, that would be a, a prized plant to have or a flower. Hmm. And do you still get the kind of the crystally type stuff on it? I can't see. I don't have a, a good shot of the picture there, but do you still get yeah, that, that kind of thing? That's the cannabinoids in the CBDs. Ah. You know? That's what that is. The plants is creating that uh, to catch pollen. Mm-hmm. Oh, interesting. So the abacus has um, almost, what, 19% CBD con 20 20 cbd content um mm. and so this is one of the ones that we decided to do because of such high content now i know you know tiff you had asked earlier about what's the difference between hemp and cbd so the hemp is is um not just female plants right it can be both like the the well, if you're growing for fiber, it doesn't matter. You're just you're growing for the stalks mainly. You're not growing for the flowers. Hmm. So all of the talk of kind of the the percentage, like how, how the THC has to be below 0.3 percent. What percentage, just to get some perspective, what percentage would a plant have to be in order to actually get you high? Uh, it's a little bit debatable, but you probably you're looking at like three to 6% on the, on the low end. Right. You know, and a lot of the, the THC strains they sell now, uh, for recreational, they're in the, the up to the high twenties or more. Okay. So that gives you an idea. So, so really like they've got, they've got like a buffer there. Like if they, if they really wanted to, they could make the, the, the cutoff like 1% or 1.5% or even 2% to give you guys a little bit of leeway so it's not, you know, it, the, the risk isn't so great for you guys, <clears throat> sorry, to have to like, uh, you know, destroy your crop because it went 0.1% too high. Yeah, that's, that's it. That would be the, the common sense approach, right? Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> so if, you know, a lot of the uh, CBD advocates are, trying to push for that one uh, percent mm. so it eliminates that problem entirely so if your plant's a little bit hot you can't get arrested right and you're still it's you might feel a little bit but we always joke you know they like the plants hot because 
people love to come and buy them because they feel good, right? And come home <laughs> right. <laughs> get a, little, a little bit high there, you know? <laughs> yeah. Well, um, also, just to kind of bring into the discussion the farm bill. So, uh, Damien, I don't know if you have that image um, of the farm bill. I think I sent it to you on the chat. But we've been, I've been trying to follow the farm bill because, again, navigating through this whole legal process and doing our due diligence on our end with, um, you know, sending in our coordinates and having the license and having the testing done and, um, you know, protecting ourselves from inevitability of, of getting in trouble for doing this. So uh, the Farm Bill in 2018 was passed. Uh, Trump, you know, had something to do with that, I guess. <laughs> and, <laughs> Uh, it was actually um, Mitch McConnell from Kentucky. He was the one that proposed it and kind of pushed it, and uh, they got it passed. And um, it's an 807-page report, the entire farm bill. But this little image kind of shows how they um, basically say the era of hemp prohibition is over, that uh, hemp is now permanently removed from the Controlled Substance Act, and it is forever deemed an agricultural commodity. Mm. And uh, it no longer is a controlled substance like marijuana. Well, that's a little unclear, as we're starting to find out. Mm -hmm. um, they said by redefining hemp to include its extracts, cannabinoids, and derivatives, Congress explicitly has removed popular hemp products from the purview of the Controlled Substance Act. Uh, the Drug Enforcement Administration no longer has any possible claim to interfere with the interstate compress of hemp products. Now, that's just not true, as we're finding mm. out. You know, mm. but, um, This should give comfort to federally regulated institutions, so like banks, merchant services, credit card companies, e-commerce sites. Um, another thing the Farm Bill did was give uh, farmers the uh, access to needed crop insurance, and they can fully participate in USDA programs for certification and competitive grants. Um, state and tribal governments may impose separate restrictions or requirements on hemp growth and the sale of hemp products. However, they cannot interfere with interstate transport of hemp or hemp products. Hmm. So... Those are kind of ideal guidelines, but when you get to brass tacks, it's not really working out like that. Hmm. Well, there was another case recently also to do with uh, uh, smoking flowers, right? So uh, they, they had banned it, and uh, some folks took him to court, um, and uh, one in court where they said uh, by banning smokable flowers, it was unconstitutional due to the farm bill, right? Hmm. And they won. And they won. The judge ruled in favor of them, saying you, you can't ban the smokable flowers because it's included in the farm bill. Oh. That's encouraging. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That, that was three days ago. <laughs> oh, wow. You guys are really on the cutting edge here. I mean, and I guess this is part of the... Uh, the problem with being on the cutting edge is that it's a little bit perilous. Like it sounds like from day to day things, it seems like you guys must be so stressed out actually from day to day. It just seems like like another thing happens and. Well, good thing we got funny CBD. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Well, it's funny because, you know, Mercola put out an article in June called Legality of CBD. Oh, no, uh, CBD market explodes, but despite perplexing legal status. And uh, so they talk about in the article about how CB the sale of CBD products um, has exploded into a $390 million per year industry. And it's projected to hit $1.3 by 2022. 
But there's still a lot of confusion around the federal legality of CBD commerce in the U.S. And so, <laughs> you know, here they're talking about, and this is what they sold to the farmers. And we've talked to farmers here in North Carolina. Like, look, here's this great economic opportunity for you. You can, you know, get out of debt. You can pay off your land. You can hire people. And yeah, we're not quite sure what the legal status is on that. Oh my God. So, but if you look online, I mean, if you Google CBD products, it's everything. They're making it for your pet. They're making, you know, sex lube with it. They're making, <laughs> you know, nerve tonic. I mean, it's, it's unbelievable just doing research on how to even build a website and what's your target audience. It's, mm. you know, CBD oil for cats. You know, that was a big one. <laughs> so. Well, we're, we're trying to really focus mostly on the medicinal benefits, you know, so. Yeah. Not one the thing that products. we do have. Yeah. One thing that we do have working in our favors, we've kind of decided that maybe the flowers is not the best way to go for right now until they really nail it down mm -hmm. um, to just go with, you know, the salves, the tinctures. I mean, you could realistically make it into tea. I mean, there's so many options available because it's a plant medicine. It's a botanical medicine, just like, you know, echinacea. You know, echinacea back in the day, nobody knew about it. And then they started studying it or things like Tulsi, holy basil, mm. you know, so there's, there's a lot of different ways that you can use it and um, produce it and kind of get around this whole legal tightrope. Mm hmm. Because the, the FDA is not really going after CBD products unless you make health claims, um, which we kind of have covered, I think, on our show before about how just broken the FDA is. But as long as I don't put on my website that it can cure your broken back, I think we're <laughs> safe. So is it time to do a shameless plug of your products <laughs> and your website? <laughs> Um, yeah, I think, uh, Damien, so, so I will say we have a website up. It's more just, uh, pictures and some contact. You can send us your email. We hope to have a newsletter it has a little description of our farm and who we are. And I think two pictures, <laughs> and, um, <laughs> we hope in the, uh, in the near future to be able to offer the salve on the, on the website and the MCT oil and, um, and there's, there's Dave on at the farm. So that's, Oh, we have plenty of smokable flowers too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So you were asking Doug, yeah, there's Dave in the farm and, and you were asking about the close ups of the, the flowers. So mm -hmm. we, we put some of those on there. You can oh, see yeah. all the, the trichomes on there and the terpenes, those are the things that make it smell good and taste good. And uh, yeah, so it's more just informational than anything else. And just to kind of see what, um, what type of interest there is, you know, if um, people want to try it, I always ask for, I've been giving it to everyone at work, at the post office, <laughs> <laughs> the, the grocery store. And, um, just really looking for testimonials from people. What is your experience? Um, is it good? Is it, uh, is it something that you would recommend to other people? Um, you know, more, I guess in, when you're starting a startup, as we are doing, you find um, your market and what people are, are interested in and um, how it helps them. And like I said, we've been getting a lot of really positive feedback. I mean, mm -hmm. We, for the most part, other than one gentleman telling me he really didn't like the way the salve smelled, which is obviously it smells like cannabis. <laughs> um, <laughs> I haven't really had any negative feedback from it. Oh, we, we get orders every day just from word of mouth. It's, it's incredible. Wow. That's amazing. So, yeah. So, yeah. Did, uh, did you have anything? Was there anything else that you wanted to, to talk about or, or cover about CBD or about your farm or... 
Um, no, maybe. Well, I have a question. Like, what? What would make your product stand out? Like, is it organic uh, uh, we, or? We we strive for the absolutely cleanest high quality. Uh, uh -huh. Soon we're, we're waiting for some equipment and uh, we'll be able to do extractions where we can uh, make stronger batches, uh, cleaner batches. Uh -huh. uh, all our uh, cannabis has grown uh, strictly organically, natural methods, uh, uh, no pesticides. It's very clean. A lot of the products on the market are not very good. There's yeah. a lot of snake oil cells going on right now. So mm. we're set so, apart by the quality. So vaping is popular now. Can you make like CBD juice that people can vape? Or? Yeah, we'll be able to do all that kind of stuff. Uh, we'll, we'll have those products in the future, you know, uh, con what they call concentrates. Mm -hmm. mm. So yeah, not so juice. <laughs> <laughs> well, <you know. laughs> Hey, that's an idea. CBD juice. Yeah, <laughs> CBD juice. And that's really kind of why we're starting with just locally, um, you know, having people be able to see and meet the farmers that actually grew the product. So back to that whole, you know, billion dollar potential industry, just a lot of the stuff that I've seen is, um, you know, derived from hemp. So it's, it doesn't necessarily have that high CBD content, but it also could, as Dave was saying, have a lot of pesticides or herbicides that were used to kind of save the crop. I mean, here in North Carolina, it's pretty harsh uh, environment to grow things just because of insects and weather and humidity and all the different very small, but turn into very big obstacles that you could deal with in, in a growing season, mm. but just being able to have people meet Dave and I and be like, yeah, I mean, we did this all ourselves. We had help from people in our community to come and, but for the most part, we didn't do anything sketchy or toxic. And, um, we just want to make the best possible medicine that's available out there. And I think people really like being able to meet someone that has grown their product from seed to the end and then made, you know, processed it themselves without, mm -hmm. you know, sending it off to be processed by some big extractor or, you know, one of the things too we hope is that we can have these particular strains like the abacus and people can see that this particular strain is good for these things. I mean, there's been books written on that um, out of California about what strains are good if you have anxiety or what strains are good if you're dealing with irritable bowel syndrome, you know, because different strains have different medicinal purposes, you know, it's... Um, mm. It's like the difference between, a, you know, different types of bay leaf or different types of parsley. I mean, it's the same kind of thing with cannabis. They're, the plants have different uh, effects on people depending mm -hmm. on, on the strain of plant that it is. If that makes sense. I'm yeah. rambling. No, no, no. <laughs> yeah. That's really interesting, actually. So, yeah, to answer your question, Tiff, we are – you know, organic, all natural, and um, here to answer any questions. And if we don't know the answer, we're really eager to research it and find out, as has been happening now with the legality of it. I mean, every day, like Dave said, two days ago it was one thing, tomorrow it may be something different. You know, I'm hoping in 2020 that, like I said earlier, they just deschedule at a federal offense and it opens the way for farmers to actually do what the farm bill intended, which is to grow CBD as a agricultural crop to, you know, reinvigorate farmers in the United States. Cause let's face it, when you're dealing with a uh, big ag, you're, you're kind of screwed as the small guy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. Well, I, I really I would hope. I'd be surprised if that wasn't the intention behind it all, you know, well, not to go down the conspiratorial route, but, you know. Yeah, I mean, if there's the potential to, there is the potential to help so many people. And it seems like 
whenever there is potential to help a lot of people, it it inevitably has all these roadblocks in front of it. And I think that's just kind of the way that it goes. Conspiracy or not, although I more, mm-hmm. lean more towards the conspiracy angle for sure. And that mm-hmm. it's affordable medicine. Yeah. You know, it doesn't, it's not going to cost you an arm and a leg and it's not going to have the side effects. You know, something you can grow in your backyard, you know, mm-hmm. that's a single threat to pharmaceuticals. Well, you guys are fighting the good fight. So, <laughs> and we're glad that you are. <laughs> So if people well, want to for uh, having us and giving us the opportunity to ramble on and on, we, you know, <laughs> another six months, we might come back and uh, everything might have changed. We don't know. Yeah. Well, fingers crossed for you guys. So if people want to mm-hmm. find you, they can go to highlandercbdfarm.com and you've got mm-hmm. uh, links to your social media on there. You got a Facebook, a Twitter and an Instagram. Correct. Yeah. Pictures of those righteous buds. <laughs> uh, like pictures <laughs> yeah for sure well thanks a lot for coming on guys thanks for having us okay well I guess that's the show for this week uh, be sure to join us next week for another Objective Health like and subscribe below and we'll put links to uh, Dave and Erica's farm and all their social media down below as well and we will see you next time Bye. Thanks, guys. Have a great day. Bye.